say the ordinances of revival, we are talking about the systems that have been allocated by which individuals, families, and territories can activate and preserve the move of God within the lifetime of a dispensation. You have to know this. If this is not discussed, we failed in this conference. You have to talk about the subject of revival. Here and there, we've read books about the moves of God. Like, let, me, let me talk for five minutes about the moves of God. There are two dimensions of the move of God. We're discussing revival tonight. Are we still together? The first dimension of the move of God is called the cyclical move of God. From the word circle, the cyclical move of God. That means these moves have similarity. There is a repeatability in their operation. Are we together now? It is these kinds of moves that you will need a father figure for. Because you can take the advantage of history and age plays a lot here. The cyclical move of God. Moving again as he did before. So when you meet a man that has done business with God for many years, he can read the writings on the wall and tell you, I know this move. When I was 17 years, this was how the formation of the revival started. And now I see that same formation. So he can guide you. An example of such a move and such an advantage was Eli and Samuel. Although the eyes of Eli was becoming dim, which is a dangerous state spiritually, but he still had an advantage of the understanding this move. The moment he saw a young boy coming and said, sir, you called me. It's amazing that God used the voice of Eli to call Samuel. He didn't say, I had the voice of him. Mm -mm, I came to you. It was the sound of your voice God used. And when he came the second time, Eli said, ah, this is familiar. I know this. The next time he calls, say, speak, Lord. Because until you respond, he cannot continue. I, he will not violate your will. Remember that God lures men. Oh, dear. Help me, Holy Spirit. I don't want to delve and talk about so many things now. The way God lures men into dimensions, you see, is to come to you. He knows your spiritual hunger and appetite. So he will manifest something about him that reflects your hunger and hide it back. The moment that happens, it will draw you to want to find out. So as a man of God, you are trusting God for a prophetic grace, for instance. Now, you will come for a meeting and it's like it will be hazy. You'll be hearing Janet and say, ah, should I embarrass myself or not? Who is Janet? I'm the one. Are you five in your... We are five. You see, you are happy. And then the next meeting, you will try it again. And it will not work. It is not backsliding. He's luring you. <laughs> Dimensions in the spirit cannot only be believed. They can be tasted. Oh, taste and see. I've always used this example. Let me use it again. I come from the north. And I, many of you have them here, right? That these people that sell meat. Yes. They never allow you buy it. They allow you taste it first. Because they know that the awareness of what is in your pocket will, 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 will shortchange their desire to extract more money from you. They know how to manipulate what is in your pocket. So they'll say, don't worry, there's no pressure. You can even go if you want to. They will dare you. And so you plan to spend 1,000 naira. And your wife is standing there with you. And then they just, you taste one. Ah, what of this one? This one is like it has too much fat. They will bring out another one and say, there's this one doesn't have fat. You end up spending 5,000 naira there unplanned for. When God is about to call Moses... Moses sees a bush burning but not consumed. And the, the bush continued there. It was God luring him. He said, I will turn aside and see this great sight. The moment he turned aside, he said, finally, I've got it. That's all. The morale for all this was to get your attention. Let me tell you this. It is hard 
to get man's attention. The distraction that is upon mankind cannot allow us to focus on God and understand. God is very excited when he finally gets man's attention. He doesn't hide it. You see his excitement. That's why when God is trying to use a man and you come to distract that man, God will say, you don't know what I went through to get this guy to now pay attention. You better not be a distraction. There are many skills that the Spirit of God can employ to get men's attention. He can relocate men. He can go as far as making you lose your job. And it doesn't matter in his economy because restoration is still possible. So it's only you that knows you are at a loss. In the economy of God, it doesn't make any difference. Because six months later, you can be back to what you would have been. So you are the only one who is feeling it as a loss. But I mean, the realm of the spirit is looking at you and saying, what is this guy saying? So God can be at liberty and comfortable to let you lose your job. Because you think that if that job does not come, the salary of five months, and God is saying, look, there are weightier matters. This is not the issue of the job. It's the reason why when you are scared and pray some prayers, God just overlooks it and says, let's deal with the major issues. There is already a provision to tell you sorry later. Hallelujah. You really have to pray for me this night because I can't even remember how I got to where. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we have the cyclical move of God. Are we together now? Yes. If a campus now, campus presidents here, you can come and meet Pastor Dele and say, we are seeing a formation in our campus. Something is beginning to happen. People are just shouting under the anointing in the hostel. And on the strength of the experience of having passed through that move, everybody who was involved in any campus move of God will smile and say, we know these writings. We know what it means. A young guy will just come and tell you, as soon as I finish lecture, something keeps driving me to the bush. You laugh. You say, I can interpret it. That one is easy. Mene, mene, tekel, ufes. No, that one, I've been trained. It's not word of knowledge. An experience. There is something about the bush and God building people. The bush doesn't have to burn. You just go there. Because it can get your attention. Are we together now? So you can advise the people. Now, but listen. But there are certain moves of God. The second dimension of the move of God. It is not cyclical. No one has seen it. These are moves that are prophetic. For instance, the coming revival that is coming that we are prophesying is in the similitude of this move. There is no man that can give a clue about it. The character of the revival left even our fathers with thoughts. They said we stretch our eyes. We don't know. We just know that something will happen. You have to trust God real time. The only spirit of God or the only spirit that can help and guide men is the Holy Spirit. That's the kind of move where both the young and old will have to stand helpless. Waiting for God to define the terms of that move. So it says, blow the trumpet in Zion. It says, sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. Then it begins to describe the formation of this army. Not every move of God can be predicted. It will not be like before. This is where the limitation of knowing the God of yesterday comes. Because the last move of God always fights the next move of God. Just because God is doing something now, the way he, or the way, just because God is not doing something now, the way he did it 10 years ago, does not mean he's not the one doing it. This is the trouble with boxing God to a cyclical move alone. When you study God's generals, many of you have studied God's generals, right? There was this man, let me, let me, since we're discussing revival, let's honor, we have to, it's like a manual. This is a textbook on revival. 
you are not a serious student of revival if you don't know the book or have not read the book or don't have it. You have to ask God and those men for forgiveness because they are still alive. The labors of our heroes past shall not be in vain. So you have to at least honor them. Are we together now? So, there was a man called Alexander Towe. Now, those days, you didn't have internet and you didn't have phones. So, if I were in Zaria here, I would not know that God was moving in Lagos. So, it would be safe to assume I'm the only one who is capturing these dimensions of God. Are you, are you getting the problem now? Alexander Doe was a mighty, mighty, mighty man of God. People say they are evangelists. He was not an evangelist. Praise the Lord. He became the spiritual mayor of Illinois. It was him that built Zion City as an attempt to conquer the cosmos. He didn't get the blueprint properly. But at least it was an attempt. He was the first person to start what we now do, our fathers do, like campgrounds, and to have a place like this. It was Alexander the Way. Are we together now? Where you have a territory that is secluded with hospitals and this that reflects the value system of heaven. The Way was so powerful that he mentored the mayors and he mentored all of these people. He came to a time where every time people read the Bible, the man they saw was the Way. And they said, Alexander, the way you are Elijah. For a while, he said, no, no, no. How can I be Elijah? But one day, he thought about it and said, ah, it may be true that I'm Elijah. And by the next week, the way was in a priestly regalia. Are we together now? Now, that's not even where I'm going to. Later on, when his ministry was about coming to an end, People came from another region and rumored a strange move that had started. This is what I want to communicate to you. And they said that move was headed by a woman huh, called Maria Woodward Eater. Now listen very carefully. That this woman, number one, that she was a woman. Two, she was uneducated. Number three, she did not, I mean, this guy said, because the, the nature of his teaching captured God and said, I am the reference of anything God. It's a dangerous lesson. So Alexander the way started hearing and tried to find out more. What was the nature of this move? It was Maria Woodward Eater that introduced something that we call presence evangelism. That means that people are slain under the power, but not like it happens to us now. It was a strange phenomenon because they would not only fall, they would freeze as though dead in that position for many hours. I remember those days when God started with us on campus. It was like that. People would just lie down as though dead for hours. And you who is the prayer warrior that initiated that trouble, you keep praying that they wake up. Because if for any reason, they don't wake up. While it is true, you are anointed, you have a situation you must manage intelligently. You are building that person, but they have parents. Are we together? Now watch this. When Alexander Dewey heard what God was doing with Maria Woodward Eater, he was not even patient to study it. He compared the move with his experience. And when he saw that there was a significant difference, he said, number one, this woman was of the devil. Her operation was of the devil. And he used his credibility to try to discourage her. So here and there, people who came from Dewey's meetings to her meetings. They were not there to receive. They were there to cause a lot of trouble. And they manipulate people including the first husband Woodward. Who made life very difficult for her. It was while Woodward frustrated her to a point that while she would be preaching, he would be having an affair with one lady. Eventually Woodward died and she was the one who conducted his funeral. Then a few years later she married the man they call Ita. 
who now was her second husband, who was a great support and helped her. Are we together now? Yes. So we see that a man was fighting the move of God. And when you study down through history, what we call denominations, now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, talking against any denomination, but almost every denomination, mainstream denomination, was a persecuted version of the previous denomination. You have to be students of history if you want to study the move of God. Now a generation is full of very proud people who just believe they are in ministry, they are in this, and they would not sit down to learn. The persecuted version of different ministries is what kept bringing forth certain ministries. And the factor responsible for the persecution was an introduction to a new dimension of God. Every time a new dimension of God was introduced that was not captured in the prior move, they fought it. Please, you have to understand this because this revival we are shouting about is going to come with side effects. And you must be trained to understand the side effect. It will not be the way it has been. Many people will call what is of God the devils because it does not conform to the mold of religion. Because it does not conform to the mold of certain things. Once upon a time, if someone fell under the anointing, you will call a doctor. You don't say, oh, praise Jesus, he's growing. No. It took time. And those who pioneered that dimension suffered a great deal. They were persecuted. They turned them into all kinds of things. The move of God on campus today is now received but those who God started using they suffered though. They were blackmailed. They were told to be destroying people, destroying students, not helping people study. Look, let me, there is a price to host the move of God. There is a level of stamina you must sustain to host God. The weight of God is very heavy. You have to be strong to be able to carry him. Are we together now? So I want to be able to share with us a few keys from scripture and from my experience as a student of revival. I submit to you by the spirit of the living God that God has helped me to study revival and I've had the privilege to meet a few people who met the generals and to converse with them. What did they tell you? I've spent my life like a spiritual archaeologist. Because I found out it's part of the responsibility of the apostolic ministry. You have to know what God did before. It's not a name and it's not a title. It's a burden and a responsibility. You must be able to educate a generation. And say this is how we know God to be. But now let's watch. Even me I'm not sure but at least I can guide you. Because his move is coming. In 2005 I had a vision pastor. In that vision, I started seeing the move of God that was going to come to China. I was in a vision of the Lord and then I saw young Chinese children. Listen very carefully. I saw young Chinese children and it was like fire just came on one. And then the fire moved to one. Then it moved to one. Then it moved to one. And then it became an inferno that could not be quenched. And the spirit of the Lord told me he was taking the move of God to China. Then the spirit of the Lord began to teach me about the move of God that was in Europe. Please listen very carefully. Europe is really supposed to be the center of Christianity. There is a spiritual heritage that is domiciled within that land that was corrupted by secularism. Till today you go to Europe, you will see it. You are a Christian, it's as if you are holding typewriter. Are we together now? The system was designed to make you feel foolish for knowing and loving God. And God has a way he preserves a move. When he finds out that that move is shrinking, he will transport that move to a region and hide it for safety. Watch this. The move of God is like Olympic fire. It must not die. 
Are we together now? So when he finds out that there are careless people who are left around that move, he will find a way of shifting that move to a zone of safety, awaiting a time when he will find a ready people. Please understand what I'm telling you. These are deep discussions on revival. We're only joking if we don't know these truths. Hmm. Hallelujah. Then the move of God went to America, pastor. And the way it was very powerful because it was an environment that was conducive for God. The founding fathers already made the environment. That means that the founding fathers territorially allowed the purposes of God to be established. Are we together now? Territorially, they represented the people there. And they said, Maranatha, God, we allow you to come. So the spirit of God on legal grounds could come and establish a lot of things. Then came all these moves. Now, let me tell you where the problem was. The move of God that happened in the 40s, the 50s, and even the early 60s, it was corrupted because those who carried that fire did not have a system of balance. So Satan invented a formula that he used when Moses was negotiating the exodus of Egypt. Leave your wives and your children behind. So the evangelists were in the field preaching and they never had the time to raise another generation. And Satan saw that I can't, this man already loves God. Backsliding is not, it won't happen. So he said, I leave you. I will come and grow with your child. John G. Lake, who was an evangelist in Spokane, and then he was also in South Africa for many years. When John G. Lake's wife was about to die, he was in the field, and his daughter made a comment, sir. He said, if daddy were here, mommy would not die. The idea they had about kingdom advance was the fact that even if my family dies, let it die. I want to show you the sacrifice that brought us to where we are today. They are not bad people. They were limited by the light that was available then. Praise the Lord. They asked Billy Graham's wife. They said, the way this man would not be with you, sometimes he could be with his wife seven times in a year. How many times? Ladies, attention, seven times in a year. Mark that man, score him over 100. So they asked her, how did you endure? Listen, how did you survive? She said there were times she felt like dying. But she would not divorce him. That was a price. Now watch this. When, when all these things started happening, Satan knew that these fathers, he knew that there was one thing common to men, time. The limitation of time. One day these guys will die and they will join the cloud of witnesses. So he said, instead of us trying to convince them to backslide, that's too much energy. Let's go back to their children and grow with them. And they began to manipulate a philosophy and an ideology, a value system that made it unattractive to be a serious Christian. Those children of yesterday are those who sit in government today. You transform a generation by growing with them. Not interrupting them when they are growing. Listen, as anointed as God has helped me to be, if I go to redemption camp right now and I meet all our fathers and our mothers, even if I remove a head and put it back, they will be impressed and say, wow, you are very anointed. I'm on my way to go and listen to Papa Deboe, please. I will talk to you later on. I said, come, I have a Greek and he says, please. Do you know why? Because Papa